And now that the last soldier associated with the war is dead, Harry Patch, who died three years ago, there is nobody there to whom we can address a question. What was it like? What did you see? What did you feel? What was the war really like? What were your thoughts and feelings? Now that question stands at the beginning of this exhibition. How to reconnect with human experience. We have the military histories, we have the statistics, we have the lines and the arrows on the map, but how do we connect with human experience? What do we do to make human experience tangible? That sound was the sound that was heard by British soldiers at 7.30 on the 1st of July, 1916. 60,000 of them in the first wave of the attack that took place uh, that morning when they were instructed to call to arms and go over the top and begin walking towards the German lines. The assumption formed by General Rawlinson, their commanding officer, working with General Haig, the commander-in-chief of the British Expeditionary Force, was that the Germans would no longer be there they would be decimated. And the reason they thought that was because this attack took place after a week of constant bombardment. A million shells expended on the German lines. The assumption, and you can imagine, it's a reasonable assumption, who could live through that? But in fact, the Germans had withdrawn beneath the ground into deeply established trenches and bunkers, underground bunkers, some of them 40 feet beneath the ground. And the result was that they survived the onslaught. So when the British advanced on those lines, the Germans came out from the bunkers, they resumed their positions at ground level, they reassembled their machine guns, and they began firing at the approaching troops. Now they didn't fire straight ahead, that would have taken a terrible toll in itself, but they did something different. They fired diagonally across the battlefield so that the line of fire converged. That was important because what it meant was that the British soldiers advanced not into a tube of fire, but into a curtain of fire. It was impossible really to walk through it and not be hit. Now it's that simple fact that accounts for the dreadful casualties that emerged at the end of the day. By nightfall, 19,200 soldiers were dead, British soldiers, uh, in no man's land. In addition to that, there were 60,000 casualties. 60,000. By the end of the battle, in November, the roll call of casualties had reached 400,000. If you add the German casualties to that, the figure is 1.5 million. By the end of the war itself in 1918, 70 million men had been mobilized and 9 million were dead. Now why am I talking about this? Why, why does this matter? It matters to me because three years after working on this exhibition, I still find it enormously difficult to grasp these statistics. They are numbers, they are verifiable, they are in no sense exaggerated, they are simply true, and yet I find them difficult to comprehend. 